Welcome to Nugget 160 with Steve Groman, and today we will be talking about the USGS, the U.S. Geological Survey. We want to show you some of the really cool places across the United States that we've been to that are very historic and geographically significant. And the first one is the Hevener Runestone State Park. In Hevener, I call it Hevener, but I think they call it Hevener, see a large thick stone with runic writing of Scandinavian explorers on Poto Mountain. The ten characters translate to Glomdal, which means valley marker, and is dated around A.D. 600 to 800. The explorers presumably got to the location via the Mississippi River, claiming the area for Scandinavia. So this was a, a really cool place to go, and I don't think very many people know about it, do you? No, I don't think it's one of those uh, hidden secrets. It's one of the oldest markers that we have seen, right. and that's why we wanted to start with that. Another one, when we were in Arkansas, we came across the Louisiana Purchase Historic State Park. It has a rather interesting marker because it's this uh, giant stone that is in the swamp. Yeah, let me read a little bit about that. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson purchased 828,800 acres of unmapped wilderness from France for the bargain price of $15 million, and near Holly Grove is where this 38-acre Louisiana Purchase State Park is. President James Madison ordered an official survey 12 years after the purchase, which had doubled the size of the young nation. On November 10, 1815, the beginning survey point for the Louisiana Purchase was placed where the 5th Principal Meridian and an east-west baseline was established by two survey parties. All surveys done by the U.S. engineers of the land purchased for America's new frontier originated from this unusual point in one of the few headwater swamps found in eastern Arkansas in the Mississippi. Mississippi Delta region. This marker here, it was actually placed by the Arkansas Daughters of the Republic in 1926, and it rests in the watery swamp. After it was erected five years later, a survey crew discovered the two gum trees that had been marked by the original survey from 1815. How thrilling that must have been for those hardworking crew That would have been cool. <laughs> right? That would have been neat. And that was sort of the beginning of the USGS that we know of today, and we're going to give you a little bit of history of these guys that have mapped the nation. Now, the National Geodetic Survey, formerly the United States Survey of the Coast, the United States Coast Survey, the United States Coast and Geodetic Survey, is a United States federal agency that defines and manages a national coordinate system providing the foundation for transportation and communication, mapping and charting, and a large number of applications of science and engineering. Since its foundation in its present form in 1970, it has been part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA is what most people know that as, part of the uh, United States Department of Commerce. But the one that we're more familiar with is the actual the United States Geological Survey, known as the USGS, and it was formerly known as just the Geological Survey. And it's a scientific agency of the United States government, and the scientists of the USGS study the landscape of the United States, its natural resources, and its natural hazards that threaten it. The organization's work spans the disciplines of biology, geography, geology, and hydrology. The USGS is a fact-finding research organization with no regulatory responsibility. And that's kind of like what we are. We have no regulatory responsibility, but we sure like to check out all these geographical and historical nuggets, don't we? Absolutely, we do. But you know what's interesting? People have been driving in a car with a map in their lap, kind of never really think about it. Where did all that information come from? We take for granted that someone mapped this for Somebody us. Somebody was walking out there in the swamp and in the desert and in the mountain and in the, in the heat, mapping out what we now know as our map. The right, and like. the surveyors are responsible for where the roads go, right. where your house is situated. You don't drive down a road or live in a house or on a farm that hasn't been surveyed by someone to uh, figure out where on earth you are. That's right, everything. <laughs> Literally, where, where on earth you are. Where does that fence line go anyway? On their website, they say they were created by an act of Congress in 1879, USGS as, oh boy, there's that favorite word, right? Has changed over oh, the decades. Oh, Steve, they evolved. Don't you know that? They <laughs> might have. They <laughs> might have. Over the decades, matching its talent and knowledge to the process of science and technology. USGS is the sole science agency of the Department of the Interior. It is sought out by thousands of partners and customers for its natural science expertise and its vast earth biological data holdings. I bet they do have a vast amount of that. they do. One of the men who is known as the Pathfinder is John C. Fremont, and he's kind of one of my one favorites. Of favorites. Yes, and we went to Fremont Peak in Northern California, and here is the geodetic survey marker 
at the top of Fremont Peak. At this Fremont Peak Memorial, the American flag was first raised on California soil March 4, 1846, on this spot by General John C. Fremont. And now you can see why he's one of my favorite people. He did a lot of mapping and a lot of work, and he's an amazing historical figure. And this is actually a beautiful spot. You can get a 360-degree view of the surrounding mountains and valleys, plus you can see Monterey Bay from here. It's just a great place to see, and they actually have an observatory up there that's open occasionally. And as I mentioned, John Charles Fremont is the great pathfinder. His life as an explorer began in 1838 as a second lieutenant for the U.S. Army Corps of Topographical Engineers. He went on a three-year expedition with French scientist Joseph Nicholas Nicolette to map the upper Mississippi and Missouri rivers. Fremont is a very colorful character. He even ran for president but lost to Pennsylvania's James Buchanan. And you can't talk about this type of topic without bringing up Fremont. We could do a whole nugget just on him. And we have a geocache along where Fremont walked. That's exactly right. And this is a marker for the Old Spanish Trail. And it's over in California on the border of Nevada near Pahrump. And then there's another man who is associated with the Grand Canyon, and his name is John Wesley Powell. And he was actually one of the directors of what I'll, I'll call it the USGS. It wasn't that at his time. But he was a very famous man for exploring the Colorado River and the first one to explore the Grand Canyon. And what's interesting about him is he only had one arm, but he would he worked that boat and went he down the Colorado boat. <laughs> He ran a boat down the Colorado. Powell was a huge evolutionist. He was one of the first people because he was during that Darwin time frame to start applying long ages to things that he saw. And so even though he did a lot of good exploring these places, he also was very instrumental in advancing evolution and it being attached to these beautiful geologic features that he saw. And here is an 1892 15-minute map of uh, Mount Marcy in the Adirondacks. Which Mount Marcy has some special significance. Yes, it does. One of my favorite presidents was hiking Mount Marcy when he found out that he was going to be president of the United States. You going to tell everybody who that is? No, he's your favorite. All right, Teddy. She and likes Teddy. I like Teddy she a lot. Likes it. Teddy did a lot of good in this country. Well, at least for had the his, national had parks. Had his issues, but for the, the, yes, for the national park system. And a true conservationist. A and a true conservationist. He did a lot. He did a lot of good things. And at the Grand Canyon, you'll see some markers that recognize John Wesley Powell with his contribution of the Grand Canyon and we've been to the North Rim a number of times and here's some spectacular pictures from there and the pictures of two U.S. Coast and Geodetic survey markers that we found just there on the North Rim. And then next up we have here the um, Wild Rose Peak in Death Valley. We've been to Death Valley 17 times and uh, this was a, about an 8 mile hike. Of course when we're there it's always uh, 105, 111. The warmest we're ever there is 100 28. This was an interesting hike, but we do enjoy doing this kind of thing, don't we? Yes, and this was one of the cool spots to get up to. It is, because when you get up these levels, you could just see forever. It's beautiful. And here's a, a view from the top of Wild Rose looking down into bad water. And then here is Scott's Bluff National Park in Nebraska. Been to Scott's Bluff actually several times also. But the survey marker shown here, as it is in this picture, is the highest elevation of Scott's Bluff at 46, 49 feet above sea level. It says natural and human erosion are working to reduce that figure. And that's true. The ground has uh, kind of dissolved away. Yeah, it's funny. You can see how this marker was at the surface. Right. And then now it's at least a foot and a half shown. It's crazy. And here we are in north of Lebanon, Kansas, and this spot claims to be the geographical center of the lower 48 states. There are some interesting things about how this was decided upon and the changes in that, but we just can't get into that great of a detail. But here is this nice monument. And you can see how they, they determine this. And they have a little drawing here. And then we have Mount Diablo in California. Extremely special place, was it not? Yes, it is. As the Mount Diablo State Park brochure cover reads, the view from Mount Diablo says it all. The summit is at 3,849 feet. But what is interesting about it is that at the mountain's peak, inside the summit building, you are allowed to stand on this tiny area of exposed rock. This is interesting because how they built the floor around the peak so you could actually stand on it. What this is, is the starting point for a survey of the public domain, the base and meridian lines established in 1851 by Colonel Leander Ranson are used today for official land surveys. Reportedly, 
two-thirds of California and parts of Nevada and Oregon's legal descriptions in real estate documents refer to Mount Diablo. There is a copper bolt that's visible inside the base of the pillar, and that is the survey starting point. And then they have telescopes that are mounted on the observation deck, and under perfect conditions, it says you can see almost 200 miles. They claim that 35 of the state's 58 counties are potentially visible. We were able to see the Golden Gate Bridge from Diablo Valley Overlook at 2,900 feet above sea level. On an extremely clear day, Mount Lassen, 165 miles away, and Yosemite's Half Dome, 135 miles away, can be seen with binoculars. The California Conservation Corps constructed the Summit Building and Museum in the late 1930s from Rock City, right there in the state park. So this is an incredible place, not only for the views, but for the history. The historical nature of it is fascinating. Can you imagine? I mean, all the places, all the surveys... And all the real estate documents, their beginning point is at this right at top of the summit. Right at that spot. Just very and you exciting. you stood there. I stood there. <laughs> yep. Well, I did too. Well, yes. We did. Anyway, let's move on to Mount Shasta in California. And we're just going to show you here is another one of the uh, survey markers. They're everywhere, up on top of mountains. Anything that is a major historic or geographic point, these markers are placed there. As I often say, we are going to need to park it here. We will return in Nugget 161 with the continuation of our Border Series. Thank you.